Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching. The channel's called Ratchet. My name's Andrew, and on this episode, I finally get done with the dry build and make a start on the bodywork. Run the title. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, if you're not, thank you for tuning back in for yet another episode. If this is the first video you're watching, you can click up in the top right hand corner and that will take you through to a playlist of all of the previous videos that I have released. All of the usual subscribe shenanigans below, if you wouldn't mind, that'd be lovely. Leave us a comment. It's always nice to read what you guys have got to think about the progress. In this episode, I can finally get ticked off of the list. All of the final jobs, well, final-ish, that I'm going to get done in this portion of the dry build before I then move on to the bodywork. So let me get you up to speed in what's been going on for the last week or so. So I'm pleased to finally document that the brake and clutch hardlines are finally complete. So let me give you a little run round of what I've done. So starting out in the front, last video I picked up or I showed you guys the um, looping flexi lines that then disappear through the bulkhead. So I got the bulkhead panel drilled for clearance of the bulkhead fittings and I've also drilled the holes that are necessary for the um, float level sensor uh, wires to pass through. That basically takes care of how the front of the car is going to look. The loom I've passed through one of the vertical members of the chassis. I depinned the um, main ISO block and a few other little smaller blocks that feed the um, radiator fan switch and the actual fans themselves. So I depinned all of those and passed them through a grommeted hole that I made in the um, in the chassis there. So those are going to be run in the void between the inner and outer panels. And then where they do come through in the corner down here, they'll then be clipped to the chassis, feeding the fans and the radiator, visibly kept to an absolute minimum. So you'll see no wiring loom feeding anything to the front clamp, which um, it was a pain in the ass, but it's something that to me, I needed to, I needed to achieve. So picking up on the front brakes, as I said, all of the fittings come through the bulkhead to make it look as simple as possible. Then there's the C-shaped hard line, which then comes out underneath and that comes to a T-piece where I had to just weld a, a bracket to the chassis and then that splits to the left and the right front caliper you'll see a secondary T-piece which has the um, brake light pressure sensor fitted to as well. I had to relocate again the horn, so that's on another very simple fabricated bracket welded to the chassis. And what I've also done, because so many items have been moved around, I've had to cut back or extend the loom to suit certain things. So it's been, you know, just a, just a knock on job really do one thing, realize something else needs to be done, etc, etc. Coming through into the cabin, um, I've decided to run the hard lines in the coolant pipe tunnel. Previously, or those that have been following right from the start, may recall that the hard lines were run down the driver's side outer sill, and it was always something that I really didn't like the look of. So fabricated up the hard lines, obviously, to follow the route that I wanted, made up some bracketry, that fixes to the chassis, which then allows me to um, fit the P-clips, which I've modified to act as hardline separators, almost. I'll put up a photo of basically what I did. I pretty much squashed a P-clip, um, and then it acts as, a, acts as a nice spacer. Because these lines have been run so differently to how they were previously, there was no way of nicely routing the hard lines through the rear bulkhead. So what I did do was make up a small plate and then drill it for a couple of bulkhead fixings um, and then weld it into the chassis. So it gives me a solid point in the chassis to pass the 
hard lines through, you'll see that the hard lines loop up and over the handbrake cable with the throttle cable, which will be grommeted, um, passing through in the center. And that will just be zip tied, I think, to the hard lines. I still need to complete the routing of the fire extinguisher lines, which is the eight mil silver tube that you can see running along the bottom. And that's just gonna pass through the bulkhead running by the side of the coolant pipe where there's sufficient gap. And then I'm just gonna try and seal that area with some form of neoprene waterproof foam because there's, there's no way to get a, a solid watertight detail. So I'm gonna try some um, foam and then see what happens really. Lying underneath the car, you can see the bulkhead fittings coming through above the coolant pipes. I then fabricated up the new hard lines to drop down and then fixed in place with um, my sort of modified P-clips. So now looking at it from a different angle, you can see them running down the chassis, up and over the cross brace of the chassis, and then along the back, you'll see the clutch line disappearing up vertically to the uh, flex line connection and then following the other brake line to a T and then splitting off to um, new hard lines to the point at which the uh, flex line connects to. So the first thing I wanted to do was get the front clam fixed into position after mucking around with the hinges for a little while. It's basically ended up with me pushing the passenger side back towards the windscreen by 10, 15 mil I'd say. So I've drilled some new holes in the front clam uh, to bolt to the hinge plate. So that's given me quite a decent closing edge around the windscreen. I'll tighten that up a little bit further when it comes to the filler stage. I'm only talking a couple of mil. I'm certainly not gonna be packing it out with five mil of filler, um, but I'm, I'm happy with how that looks now. So once I've got the front clam fixed into place, I then started looking at basically sucking in the surrounds to the fuel filler caps. Now I'm sure they're produced to you know, give a certain level of tolerance depending on where people actually finally end up fitting their filler caps. You know, These could move around maybe five mil or so in any direction. But now I've got these fixed into place and I really don't mind chopping up uh, fiberglass. I thought I would try and get these openings nice and tight around the filler caps. So what you'll see I've done is at the opening flap side, you know, I've managed to push that in 10 mil I've cut into the surround and then just held into place with some um, panel clips the bodywork to then tighten up the surround around the top end of the cap. So if we compare what I've marked out here to the passenger side, which is further behind in markup, you'll see how it's changed. So yeah, I've started doing the work, but I've not done any work around the remainder of the cap. So around here, I'll um, you know cut a slice and then bend it in so it follows the contour of the flap better. Uh, it's nice and tight on the right hand side, so I think that will remain as it is. And then on the um, line of the hinge, I'll then cut into that and form uh, the shape I need to then um, create that squared edge around the hinge profile. So what I can do now is I can put up some formwork basically around the um, edges and start laying up some fiberglass. So now I've got the formwork introduced that I was talking about. I've used some ABS plastic because I've got a massive sheet of that left over now I'm not going to be using it. Um, but what I've done is I've basically formed the internal face 
of the um, return edge around the hinge portion of the filler flap. So when I fiberglass on the inside of the clam, I'll then remove this uh, formwork and then that will give me a nice level straight um, face to then start body working. You'll also see that I've just introduced some cardboard and masking tape over the slices that I'd put in the top of the um, top of the clam. I basically learned over the years just to try and do this sort of work because it's far easier to do a bit of prep work like this at this stage than it is to try and work with a whole load of messy uneven fiberglass trying to lay it up without anything to lay it against if that makes sense a few inches later i try to set up the camera so i could do a little time lapse of me laying up this fiberglass but it just proved to be so awkward that i just gave up in the end and just cracked on so what i've done is if you'll be able to see is laid up the fiberglass around the flat edge and then put in some p40 around the bits that I said I was going to. Looking at it from the top side, I just need to pop off the formwork that I put on, fill in the top work, fill in the top a little bit more with some additional P40 around here, and then um, start the bodywork on the top side. Now that the fuel filler caps around are shaping up nicely, I want to turn my attention to the front nose panel. I touched on a few videos ago um, the fact that I need to deepen the front nostrils because I've panelled out the inner arches and I just need to help the radiator cross flow um, better. So I'm going to whip this off of the car, mask up some cut lines and then start cutting into it. And I'm thinking basically doubling the depth of the nostrils. I've certainly got the space to. Um, so I will make a start on that one. So after looking at the panel, the easiest thing to do would be to just cut along on the flat edge just before it starts to chamfer around to the underside. So if I put slices in here, <clears throat> both sides of the panel, it will basically just flop down and then I can um, fix into position the depth that I want to make the nostrils. <laughs> front nose panel uh, cut up and you can see that they're nice and bendy so what I'll now do pop it back on the car see how deep I can actually make them and then get some um, strips of that ABS plastic and then just glue it top and bottom to fix the depth that I want and then start making up some form work on the inside so I can start laying up the fiberglass on the outside. So I've got the nostrils now as deep as they can go. I've not quite doubled the depth but it's getting towards that sort of um, increase in size. I used just some 8mm rubber um, as a spacer off of the fire extinguisher bottle so I didn't go too low so then you know it's not gonna hit on there at any point. So now what I can do is pull this from the car and then um, start making up the formwork on the inside that I've spoken about. So after what feels like an eternity, I have got the formwork of the nose panel done. In this particular instance, I've just used some uh, strong cardboard masking tape just to make sure that it gives me a flatter surface as possible ready for when I lay up on this side. So what I'll do is I'll wet out the piece of cloth on, um, on the bench and I'll do that on both faces. Doesn't have to be super accurate. I'll then put some resin on the face that I'm mating it to to help it adhere. Uh, 
And then once I've done that, I'll get the mat into place, roughly, and then just start working, working it into the gaps with the paintbrush. And this is 300 gram chopped strand, so it does um, conform to any gaps and contours quite nicely. So this is basically the process. So if I've not done by now, we'll um, cut away to a time lapse with a little bit of music. So after the initial layup had dried, I then set about um, forming the return edges that you can see around the around the front of the nostrils. So again, that was done in the same way with um, cardboard and masking tape. So once all of that was dry, took off all of the cardboard, gave it a quick knock back with um, the DA sander, and now I'm on to the P40 stage. So I've just got a thin coat of P40 on the inside, which I'm just waiting um, for that to dry before I can get in there with the DA and um, start knocking it into shape. There's still a lot of work necessary on the outside just to get everything flowing nicely and looking correct. Um, but again, that will just come in time and that's the pain in the backside of bodywork. It is just so time consuming, but we'll get there and I'm sure this will work out exactly how I need it to. So that basically takes care of this episode. It's been a bit of an all sorts one really. A few little annoying jobs that just needed doing. A um, couple of nice wins, getting the clutch and brake lines done. And then finally getting onto something new and that's tackling the bodywork. So next episode, I think I'm going to carry on with the nose panel, get that into reasonable shape before I then move on to trying to get the doors fitted in the holes um, and see what's really involved in getting those fitting exactly how I would like. And then, yeah, onwards from there, rear clam, body mounts, and all sorts of other good stuff. So please um, like, subscribe, comment. Hopefully, the next update should be a little bit quicker than this one, and they should come a little bit more regular as I manage to crash through the bodywork. So up until then, I will catch you next time.